Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Tiny Tastic Talks. Today, I thought that we should talk about what treatment looked like for the week that I was in Ottawa from the 21st of October throughout, that was the Monday till the Friday, and what happened before that and all that stuff so that you have a clear picture of what that was like for me in my specific case and what that maybe could look like for you in the future, whether you end up potentially going to Ottawa for treatment or somewhere else if you live in another part of the world, what you can maybe expect from that. So after the consultation on October 9th, I was put on a certain type of eating plan, basically like the keto diet, which was to reduce inflammation in my body. He was saying that because of the shingles virus that I had two and a half years ago, that there could be some inflammation still happening in the body. It was an interesting week and a half before I got to see him again. I was also taking supplements. One was called curcumin and the other one was called glutathione. That was to boost energy levels uh, and that was just for that week and a half or so that I didn't see him. So with the new diet in place and the supplements, the antioxidants that I was taking, that improved my symptoms already by 50%. So I was not experiencing my tremors as much. He wanted me to do exercises, which included a post-it note with a dot, okay, like this, and I would stick it to the wall. And so I'll do it here, okay? And so I'd stick it there, that's about eye level for me. I would have to stand with my feet together, forward, and move my head Basically, I'll demonstrate on the camera. So move it like this, like that, a few times, and then up and down, like this, okay? And without talking. That was to access my cerebellum, which is in the back of the head here, which is in charge of coordination. So that was going to be helping with my tremors in both arms. Now, when we got to the first treatment on Monday, the 21st of October, this is some of the stuff that we did and I've sped some portions up, right? Like you're seeing. As you can see with the treatment that we did, it was a lot of repetition and a lot of just ingraining what we were doing like just over and over and over again so that my brain would be able to latch onto those pathways that have been there before, that were there before FND ever happened to me or came about. Like those pathways were just cemented in my brain. And that's something that was amazing for me to see throughout the week. I started not having to wear my noise canceling headphones, which was amazing. That was one variable that he could not really predict or comment on because he said, you know, I don't know what's been damaged with your hyperacusis. Nice and tall, eyes are closed. Eyes are open. Nice. You're a statue right there. Yes. The first time we had a pretty significant for you mm. back. Good. We're gonna do my favorite test. Feet come apart, arms are out. Your goal is to stay right there, okay? Okay, oh, that thing. Yep. Yep, okay. Eyes are closed and we're marching. Okay. Feet a little higher. A little higher? Okay, good. No, no, no. Okay. Like that's that, yeah. that, that. That's fine because it's walking. Yeah. Right? But our first time, we had a pretty good. I, I remember that. Here yeah. to here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Three, five, seven, two, two, zero. 
0.05. We have been told, like I said in the last video, that FND is something that's for life, but it's actually not. Like the system has told us that it's for life, but if you're treated in the right way with the right professional, you are able to see improvement over days and over weeks that maybe you've been going to see someone for over a year and you've barely see, you've seen very small incremental change. Obviously every case is different. So what I had to do for treatment would be different from what you would maybe have to do for treatment. In the next video, I actually have an interview with Dr. Isaiah and we talk about my case. We talk about FND. We talk about vestibular issues. So stay tuned for that interview next week. It's very informative and we will also have links down in the description box to his center, his email address, because he's just an email away. He responds very quickly. And I'll have more of an update after the interview about how I'm doing now and what are the things that I'm doing now to improve my quality of life and moving forward with my life essentially. All right, I will see you in the next one. Subscribe if you have not. If you like this video, then please give me a like. It helps a lot. And yes, see you next week. Bye. So what this screen is for is the temporal lobes. They live right beside the ears. Mm. They're in charge of sound. They're in charge of like memory. They're in charge of like knowing the what instead of the where. Okay. They're involved in this process called like the, the ventral stream, which is just saying like what's important right now, where the dorsal stream is kind of like, where is it important? Okay. Nice and tall. I'm gonna borrow here. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. just gonna keep looking at that yep. little dot. It's a pretty boring screen, but. How about checkers? I like checkers. <laughs> like, I, I don't like the game, but um, the, you like, the pattern yeah. is nice. You're a big fan of checkers, guy. I do. I, yeah. There's, sorry. I used okay. to have like Vans high tops that were oh, like, okay. you, yeah, they, they were checkered and then you'd flip them down and they were hot pink on the inside. Oh. It was fantastic. There we go. Yeah.